Nice to meet you, Carl, again. I'm very happy to meet you here in, uh, in Munich at our, our patient meeting uh, called Mun uh, Munich Meets Zurich okay. um, that we organize to inform patients. And I would just like to take the opportunity to basically ask you about a few recent political developments that took place in Germany because you know that the health insurances in Germany are quite reluctant to cover the costs oh, okay. um, for patients to receive bariatric surgery. And just very recently, a few months ago, um, the service that actually looks at each application of each patient mm -hmm. published uh, a set of guidelines that should be respected um, in order to to judge bariatric, sur uh, bariatric surgery. And I would be curious about your opinion on one of these few key messages. Okay. And the way I would like to do that, I just give you sort of a reference of that okay. key, of, the, of that paperwork, and you just say what comes to your mind and what you think about it. Good. So the first point that I would like to hear your comment on is the assumption that bariatric surgery works mainly by restriction and malabsorption. So what's your thought on that? Well, that's a very outdated way. And actually, not only is it outdated, it's also wrong. Um, we now know that patients after gastric bypass surgery do not malabsorb any calories. There's no calorie malabsorption, and therefore it cannot be a mechanism. We also know that operations such as a sleeve gastrectomy or gastric bypass have no restrictive element because what we see is we see rapid gastric emptying of food from the stomach into the small bowel. So it's actually an anti-restrictive procedure. Um, so we now understand that the mechanisms, how these operations work, is by sending a very strong signal of satiety from the gut to the brain. So these are physiological operations and not anatomical restriction or malabsorption. So it's a very old mechanical approach to a very much more complex problem. Yes, and that's why the operations have not really had the penetrance in society because we actually um, did not understand how it's working. Now our understanding is much better with modern science and it's consistently showing that these operations work through physiological means, not through anatomical changes. All right, that's very interesting um, because it's the opposite of what they say in their paperwork. Another point... Maybe it's just outdated and they need to update it and get the new science into it. That might be one option. Um, another point that they made in their paperwork is very early on in their introduction that they stated that bariatric surgery basically is a non-causal approach to a disease. So they say basically what we do, we operate on a healthy organ, like the stomach. And um, they make that sound like a very silly idea. So what's your, th uh, what your thought on that one? I think it's the wrong approach because the way we need to approach a disease like obesity is using integrated physiology. You know, I agree with you, it is not um, appendicitis that we're operating on the appendix, but what we want to do is we want to change the patient in totality, a holistic approach. And what we know where the problem lies is inside the subcortical areas of the brain, such as the hypothalamus or the nucleus tractus solitarius, but we also know that the way to reach the, tractus, the nucleus tractus solitarius or the hypothalamus is by sending signals from the gut to the brain. So what modern science has shown us is that patients who are obese lack the signal from the gut to the brain. And all that happens with an operation is you enhance this natural signal. So by operating on the gut, you actually are sending the signal where it needs to be. So it is actually seeing in totality, using integrated physiology, that it actually helps working. So that's very interesting. So you make that sound as if obesity is not a question of willpower, of, of, of motivation. So what do you think about the prerequisite of, of trying you know, a certain amount of time of non-surgical treatment like lifestyle therapy, behavioral therapy and other approaches that need to be mandatory done before a patient can be offered surgery? 
We now agree that obesity is a disease and it's a disease that needs treatment. And it is not a lack of willpower. Um, and maybe we're making the same mistake we made 40 years ago when we had patients with clinical depression coming to us and we told them just to cheer up. We actually now know that it is a disease such as clinical depression that needs a serious treatment. Now there's many treatments that we can try. Um, many patients with this disease will respond to a diet approach but we know that's only two in every ten. We know that some people will actually respond to medication and that may be an additional three out of ten. But we know despite our best efforts and despite the patient's best efforts, the majority of people will not respond to our good diets and our good medication at the moment. And if appropriate, those patients should be considered for surgery. Okay. Um, I think that was the most important points that I wanted to discuss with you. I thank you very much for your thoughts on this and it was a great pleasure to see you as always. Thank you very much. Thank you.